Today we're going to look at how to mod your N64 for RGB output using Tim Worthington's N64 RGB board. Uh, if you've seen my NES RGB video, you know that that produces some amazing results and I consider it to be an essential purchase or modification for that console. Uh, if you've seen my N64 RGB comparison video, you know that maybe it's not as critical to the N64, honestly. The composite video out is pretty good for composite video. The S video is really good as well. Uh, the RGB seems to introduce some kind of interference, uh, which I tried to mitigate a couple different ways, but it seems to just be inherent. It does give you a sharper picture, but that may or may not actually be desirable with the N64 due to its sort of pseudo 3D, early 3D graphics. So let's begin. Uh, grab your screwdriver, your soldering iron, and let's, uh, let's get going. So obviously step one here is take it apart. We need to get this jammy out of there first. I probably do this a really dumb way, but hey, it works, so. Set that aside. I'm going to flip it over. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six. These all use that stupid special game bit thing that Nintendo was so fond of. So that's all those. Take the top off. Nothing that we need is on the top, so we're just gonna set that aside. You'll see on my installation, I did it a little bit different here. Uh, this is not a normal wire that comes with it. Uh, let me put this sort of this angle so you can actually see it. So here's our N64 RGB. This is the wire that comes with it. Uh, and this is actually a bit of, <laughs> Mogami microphone wire that I happen to have sitting around. Um, what we need to do now is take off this whole heat shield assembly. So for that, we're just gonna use regular old Phillips screwdriver. Um, for this, in this case, basically all these are irrelevant. What we want is this one, this one, back here is one, over here is one, over here, through these holes, these two along the side here got to come off. And I think mine is actually missing one up here, but that's fine. This part actually just comes out and we set that aside. Uh, and then there's these two smaller ones. I need to switch bits for that because those guys are kind of little. Now, a lot of these screws are kind of different, so it's a good idea to keep track of what's what. Um, we also got to take these two off and these two off. We'll go back to the bigger one for that. These ones are chrome colored, so they're a little easier to keep track of. Most of these screws are the same. Uh, these back two are longer ones. These front two have the little washers on them, and then these two obviously are tiny little ones. So we should be able to pop off this heat sink now, if I'm not mistaken. You can see this comes out now. The heat sink on the bottom that we're taking off. Uh, you'll see we're gonna get to this in a minute. And then we should be able to take this off the top here. There we go. 
Takes a little force sometimes. Set this aside. Ah. All right, so that can come off now. So, down here underneath this wire, uh, and this, this gunk there is why it takes a little effort to get that off. So this chip right there. Can you see that? You can't see that. So that little chip right there. So you can see we have to use the supplied wire to wire it directly to those pins, which is pretty small, intense work. Um, but there's a pretty easy way to do it uh, that makes it not so bad. Tim nicely includes some very thin solder. I have some of my own as well. So essentially what you're gonna do is put your little thin solder in there uh, and then heat it up with your soldering gun so that you get solder on the actual uh, tips of these contacts and then put the wire there and then heat it up again with the solder gun. So you would take this, heat, touch, let go. Heat, touch, let go. Heat, touch, let go. Heat, touch, let go. And that's gonna put just a little drop of solder there and that way you can then come back in with your wires and connect those there. So that's step one, is to connect all of these to there. Um, it's not as difficult as it looks. I mean, like I said, they're very tiny. So it's, uh, if you're not super comfortable with soldering, this is probably not the best project to start on, but, uh, that's that. Uh, the next step obviously then is to solder it in the same fashion to the actual N64 RGB board. So as you can see, I've already done that here, of course. Um, normally you would do this with this outside of the N64. Uh, and then the final step is to solder the board to the multi-out jack. Um, so this is an all digital connection. This is where the analog connection starts happening. And if you've seen my comparison video, you'll see well, you might understand why I tried this. It looked like there was some interference happening uh, in the video signal, so I thought if I got a better shielded wire uh, here, that would help. It turns out it didn't. Um, it also didn't really help switching to a nicer cable. So I think that that's just inherent. So here, uh, and these pretty much all match up in the instructions. Uh, they've got guides, but it basically just goes you know, down here, and then opposite, in this case, down there. So if you put these sort of right next to each other so that, um, you know, left side of this is left side of that, it's literally just go down the row, go down the row. Really hard to mess that one up. Uh, so over here we have blue, green, red, ground, and I decided that we were going to use C-Sync. Uh, so the N64 RGB board allows us to do C-Sync rather than sync on Luma if we want. In terms of quality, it makes no difference, but it's handy because it means that I can use the same cables I use with my Super Nintendo and my um, regular NES uh, that was RGB modded in another video. Uh, there's two different types of C-Sync here. Um, I use the one on the top, which more closely matches what's uh, on the Super Nintendo and what's on the NES, uh, at least the way I modded it. Uh, that way I don't have to go through and change the sync levels for every stupid console. And then that comes around the back here. Um, this is where it gets a little dumb. I'm gonna zoom in here again. Most of these are pretty clearly labeled, which is handy. Uh, let's bring it up here and zoom. Focus. So, let's see if I can point this out. 
we have oh these are really not easy to see well I'll put a link to the better images on Tim Worthington's website this little black wire here um, don't worry about that that shouldn't be necessary the only reason that that's there is because I cut a trace of one of the wires trying to do something else um, but on this particular revision since I'm working with the North American uh, NTSC version of the N64 we can actually just wire our C-Sync directly to the correct pin uh, which in this case uh, was C-Sync I used white which white there's two whites the one without the black marker on it which is this one which is wired to where it says um, S I don't know if that's supposed to mean sync but in this case it works just fine for that so we did that uh, this was just repairing a cut connection that I made so like I said don't worry about that otherwise it's pretty obvious it just goes across the top there um, like I said I'll have the link in the description for uh, the images on Tim's website this c-sync thing is the only thing that was different so wire that if you want c-sync wire that to this s terminal there and that will get you the same, I think that's pin 7, uh, the same uh, C-Sync sort of cables that you use with NES and Super NES. Uh, then it's just down to putting it all back together and uh, for that, let's refocus here, you'll see that we bent out this back tab there. So if you compare the sides, this one's bent up, this one's bent back, that's to allow this wire to go through. So this, I kind of did that, and then that, so it folds like that. And then it's going to come out the back right there, just like that. Uh, the only thing, cool, and that should pretty much just snap right on there like that. So now we've got that. this over make sure that goes on there like that now we can start screwing everything back together so for that we need the bottom again hey stop moving Take our little chrome screws. If you remember, those go with these. Need another chrome jabby. And there. And obviously, once we get to putting this back together, we'll want to make sure that these are well out of the way, kind of like that. That should be fine. These long ones, I'm just doing this in no particular order other than I just want to make sure that I don't forget where things went. Uh, this has little hooks on it there that need to go around that. And you should be able to see this when you do it, but just in case pointing it out so that you can see. That one always is an annoying, irritating pain. And the reason is that those never seem to go in the right spot. So there we go. Now it's in. Perfect. Uh, these ones with the washers went here. So that's really the only tricky part about this is just making sure that these, where those longer, skinnier screws went, that actually goes all the way down. Um, 
as I said, this was something where I was trying to fix a problem, was not able to do so using that. So the normal recommendation is just to use some of the spare bits of this wire. And honestly, I would just recommend doing that. Um, there's really no reason to do it the way that I did it. Since uh, having tried it, it made no difference. All right, long skinny screws go back here. And we're done with that bit. And all the rest of these are basically the same. I don't know why I'm missing one of these screws, but whatever. It's all the same oh, bag. All right, so that's that. Now we pop the top back on. Do, do, do. Screw it back together. All right, so that's the last screw. Flip it back over. Stick our expansion pack back in. Done. We now have successfully modded our N64 for RGB and we're all set to go.